Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of Jim and Java. I'm always excited to be here each week to be able to answer your fundraising questions. We've got some good questions this week and we're gonna focus in on one particular, but I wanna just remind you all of how much I appreciate each and every one of you and just this community that we're building, we're continuing to increase the number of subscribers on this channel. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider subscribing and click the bell to be notified of when videos are released. But it's exciting that I am really seeing us share as a community the issues that we have and to be able to carry each other's burdens to help each other get better in this area. And I know so many nonprofit leaders struggle in the area of fundraising, development, public relations, recruitment, and uh, this area of building and developing relationships with people. And so it's so exciting that as a community, we can help to build each other up and to also make a difference in our world and even in eternity. So I'm excited about that. Well, I mentioned our first question, so let's dive into our question of the week. Our question of the week is from Carl in Atlanta, Georgia. And Carl asks, should events still be a part of an overall development plan? Well, Carl, that's a great question. And I really will start out by saying yes, it definitely does. In fact, from my standpoint, I still believe that fundraising events are important tool in your tool belt for development. Now, I know it was interesting as we watched in 2020, just as COVID started to build the pandemic, how many naysayers, how many people really believed as they shifted from a live event to virtual event, how many actually believed that virtual events were going to be an easy, simple way to replace the live event. And it was apparent by the fall of 2020 and definitely by spring of 2021, how many people missed meeting and gathering together and being part of a live event. So much so that many of the naysayers who felt and believed that virtual events that were gonna be the wave of the future were seen with their tail between their legs, heading out of town, as I like to say. It, uh, it really has been exciting as I've watched each season from the spring of 2021 to fall of 2021 and even now into the spring of 2022, just how much organizations are starting to come back. They're building on the attendance that they've had uh, in the past. Some are at... 65, 75, 80% of where they were pre-pandemic. Some are at the same place uh, pre-pandemic. I just attended an event last weekend that surpassed their pre-pandemic numbers. And one of the things that they were uh, just consistent in was what we're seeing from a lot of organizations in that even though the numbers of people in attendance may be less, income has continued to increase all the way through. So we had organizations that did survive through 2020 and 2021, but now as we head into 2022, we're seeing much more growth in income from many organizations. And I, you know, I, I like to kind of explain that by saying perhaps maybe there was pent up giving in there that people really wanted to be able to give, either didn't know how to or were concerned about what the future would be like, so they waited. But uh, it's been exciting to see. Now getting back to the question, it is a, it really is a good indicator. Your event should never be more than 30% of your total revenue of your organization. If you get beyond 30%, you're becoming much too dependent on your um, your dinner for income. And that's never a good thing to be uh, at a place where you're so dependent on one source of income. If I was going to become dependent on anything, 
I would become more dependent on your major donor area. Now you always have to be careful, even in a major donor area, that you're too vulnerable. There's a lot of organizations that are 90-10 or even 95-5 dependent on their major donors, that 95% uh, of their income comes from 5% of their people. That's never good. But if I was going to be dependent, I'd rather be dependent more on the major donor area. But diversify your portfolio of fundraising, your tool in your tool belt. Just like you diversify your portfolio of stocks, you want to diversify your number of events that you have. Events, activities, strategies, including with events, should be a direct mail area, some type of communication or direct marketing uh, the email marketing strategy you could have, a mid-level strategy, foundations, estates, all those kinds of things are so important. But I don't by any means believe at all that events are dead or dying. I believe that events are a tremendous way to reach a lot of people at one time and be able to really see significant growth in all areas of development. I believe that events really bolster the win, keep, and lift strategy. You are definitely bringing people back who have been there in the past and you want to lift those people to higher giving levels. Get them to consider giving more than they've given in the past. From the keeping, if all you did was have someone who came every year and continued to either maintain or maybe even slightly increase their monthly giving to your organization. Huge win. But also remember, there is a big aspect of winning to events, and that is bringing new people into the fold, introducing them to this family that you're developing as your nonprofit, and make sure that you continue to bring in new people and new blood into the organization. You wanna shut your back door, make sure that People who are currently giving continue to give, but you also want to uh, open that front door as wide as possible and bring in new people to give to your organization every year. And the dinner is a great way to do that. It's a great rallying point. It is much like an annual shareholders time where people can hear the successes and the outcomes of things that have happened within your organization. So Carl, I do believe that the uh, non that uh, events are a great part of your fundraising plan a great part of your fundraising strategy and should be continued over time and even diversified from the standpoint of doing multiple events doing a dinner in the spring and a golf event in the fall or dinner in the spring and a walkathon in the fall or bounce those two but look at other ways to diversify your portfolio so Carl, I hope that answered your question. Uh, for those of you uh, who are part of this family, we just appreciate you so much. Thanks for hanging in there with us. I hope these videos are helpful. I really, really want to be here to provide good, valuable information for you. If you enjoyed what you heard today, put a comment down in the, the section below. It really helps for me to get your feedback and your comments. And uh, we, we are starting to have some really good comments uh, one so good that uh, I, the other day, included a comment about increased fulfillment rate. I made a video on that to help to better improve fulfillment rate for organizations because I know that's an issue that people are dealing with. So I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, if you haven't already started following us on Instagram, please do so at the Dev Effectiveness Strategies and watch the Monday tips, watch the video on fundraising and film that, that I will put in there as a fun part of development, and also our Thursday short two-minute tips. So anyway, thank you so much for tuning in and for watching, and as I always say, we are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.